Um, I, I want to talk about bio-inspired robotics. I'm very excited that you're, you're all here and invited me to, to talk. Before I do, I wanted to quickly mention the UCSD uh, Institute for Contextual Robotics. How many people here have heard of the Contextual Robotics Institute? Okay, a, a few of you, and that's good. So this is a new initiative that was just announced in last October, basically, and, uh, oh, okay. I think I can hear myself now. Um, and the idea is that in the years to come, uh, robots are going to become more of our, uh, our more of our daily lives. And uh, and in my mind, that's a good thing. You're going to see automated systems that can do everything from help your grandmother able to uh, live independently uh, for longer. Um, and maybe help your surgeon perform a type of surgery that he couldn't do on his own. Um, so I think this is a very exciting time, and uh, UCSD is is you know making the bet and uh, and deciding that we want to become a big part of this. So the goal is in the next five years for UC San Diego to become one of the top schools in robotics, uh, which is an ambitious goal. Um, but we're in the process of hiring people, recruiting a director. Uh, I was one of the first faculty hired about a year and a half ago, uh, a year and a half ago as part of this initiative. And uh, if you haven't heard about it yet, I think you will. Um, so let me just quickly talk about some of the projects that I'm excited about. Um, generally, uh, my lab is called the uh, uh, Bio-Inspired Robotics and Design Lab. So we look to nature for ideas in building automated systems um, that are maybe you know different from what you what you might traditionally think of robotics, but they they ideally bring in some of the advantages of natural systems. And so the examples that I have up here are looking at um, soft robotics. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Robots that um, are 3D printed or rapidly prototyped to have a variety of functional characteristics. And also uh, systems that can achieve something like self-assembly uh, by folding. Uh, I'm not actually going to have time to, to get into that in detail. But basically the idea is if you look at robotic systems today, um, existing sort of commercial manufacturing systems, for example, like the one I'm showing here, um, this, this problem is well solved. But you, uh, if you go into a plant that's making cars, like um, hopefully you can see, um, you'll have the robots in one area and the humans in another area, right? They don't, they don't interact and that's by design because they're dangerous. They're these giant um, heavy arms flying around with you know, tools on the end of them and, uh, and, and the last thing you want to do is have someone get hurt. Um, but the question is what about unstructured environments such as search and rescue in a collapsed building, situations involving directly interacting with humans like the ones I was talking about, and uh, robot deployment in, in environments too hazardous for humans. So uh, the goal here is to achieve something like this. Again, hopefully you can see this is a, an octopus escaping from a tiny hole uh, that's a small fraction of its own size. And the reason it can do this is it has no skeleton. It has very few rigid parts. It has a beak, it has some protection for its brain. As long as those parts can fit, it can squeeze itself through anything. And you can imagine how this would be an amazing um, ability for a search and rescue robot that's trying to squeeze into a collapsed building. So um, inspired, inspired by this, um, we, we've started to think about the materials we use in robotics. So if you look at traditionally, this is one uh, axis, which is Young's modulus or, or stiffness. There are v many ways to, to uh, to think about materials, this is one of them. And robots are typically designed out of things like steel, um, you know, other rigid materials, hard plastics. Um, but if you look at the materials that we're made of, out of, uh, that natural organisms are made out of, we really use a much broader range of, of stiffnesses. Everything from, uh, you know, really hard teeth down to things like cartilage and, and uh, you know, fat, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> depending on your situation. So, um, so this is some, I just wanted to show, this was uh, some collaborators of mine uh, back at Harvard where I was before I came here, were thinking about how can we make soft materials move. And this is one of the simplest ideas. It's really just like a balloon. If you pump air into some soft material and you design it, you can get it to move in specific ways. And hopefully you can see this little guy that's sort of doing the robo limbo to, <laughs> to squeeze under something. 
And so I started to think about, but they have all these tubes hanging off the back which are delivering the air and controlling and powering it. And so we started to think about how can we make this, this kind of system untethered. So I won't get into all the details, but it's a very, this is a very simple design where we just sort of threw some of the components like a microcontroller, battery, et cetera, on there. And we were able to make this large scale sort of three foot long soft robot that um, and, and one of the things we, the thing we want to show in this video is that you might think that this kind of system is going to be weak or is going to have to you know it's going to be fragile but actually these systems are just naturally adapted to a wide range of conditions so these silicone rubbers can handle things like really cold temperatures they can handle brief exposure to flame uh, like we show here when we put this guy in a barbecue um, they the 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 material properties are are very uh stable over this long range so they can function in the same way and again here we're just pumping air into internal channels we didn't put the batteries on when we put it on the barbecue um in this one it's it's going to be hard to see in this video but he's walking into water and again assuming you don't dunk all the electronics um, which we didn't, you know, we obviously weren't careful to protect in this case. The body itself is able to uh, with, withstand contact with water and a wide variety of chemicals actually. Um, and then finally what you're going to see at the end of this video was the sort of ultimate goal that we knew if we could make our soft robot do this, we knew we sort of had something. And, uh, and maybe some of you have ideas of what that might be. You're probably going to start guessing when you see this guy walking underneath a, a Subaru Outback. And I should point out that this white stuff here, you know, we don't see much of this here, but this is the kind of environment you have uh, in abundance back in Boston to, uh, to do experiments in. Um, but sure enough... <laughs> um, you can drive over these guys and, and, they, and they can get up and keep walking. Okay, and hopefully doing something good, you know. Um, I know, uh, you know, some people think of like Terminator or something like that, but. Um, so one thing I wanted to say is, you know, we're making these type, that system was made through a molding process, and, uh, but what's really coming online right now, which is also very exciting, is 3D printing and really the ability to print a wide range of materials. What I'm showing here is the orders of magnitude of change in stiffness you can get just by, uh, with a commercial system. This is a sort of industrial commercial system, you know, 250K, which we were lucky enough to get, um, get a version of here in my department. And what you can do with this type of thing is you can start to design systems that combine hard and soft materials. So if you have things like a microcontroller, a pump, a uh, source of energy, um, figuring out how to connect those to a soft body in a robust way is a challenge. And what we did here was we actually made a system, we wanted to make these soft robots move quickly, so we made a system that uses combustion. So you squirt in a little bit of butane uh, from essentially from what looks like a butane lighter, and then you squirt in a little bit of oxygen and you uh, have a high voltage spark and you're going to see the result here. <laughs> um, you can get something that can have a much quicker uh, movement than the than one I showed previously. So we have some high speed video and we wanted to show that we can actually dis determine which way it's going to go so we have these little legs that you inflate and then you have a jump. Okay, so that's just, um, you know, I, I think that's about my time. I just wanted to show you some of the fun stuff we're working on and really what makes this possible is bringing in uh, a lot of different disciplines from uh, materials, modeling, uh, thinking about controls, system integration, rapid manufacturing, and how to design these type of soft systems. And, um, and I just wanted to quickly show some of the great students here who are working on these projects. Thanks.